I am having so much fun creating these free motion machine quilting tutorials and these skills and drill sets. It is an absolute blast trying to think backwards from what I've been doing naturally for so many years to create it in the simple step-by-step -step process. So today we're doing swoops and swirls. I bet you're dying to get started. Now, our goal with these tutorials is to help all of us that are new at free motion machine quilting kind of walk through the process of learning how some of the basic shapes turn into awesome motifs down the road. A couple things I want to point out and recommend. I love this book by Angela Walters. It's loaded with all kinds of great motif and design ideas, but it really talks about taking your quilt and just looking at it one piece at a time. So I'm trying to think that way when I'm going to break down swirls and swoops one piece at a time. If you drop down into the description or the link below, we have these printables for you, as well as you can get your supplies there if you need, like your sew slip mat for your machine, maybe your machine girl's gloves, which I wear all the time. I love these things for grip. So we're starting on a basic, it's like a puzzle piece, or it's more of like a stippling that's wide open, but it's gonna help us kind of start tipping from a straight line into a curved line. Okay, and then I'm gonna walk you into these swoops, I'm calling them. And then from the swoops, we're gonna start to break ourselves into kind of a pointed or a, um, what could also become kind of a flame style shape, and we're gonna work through those, but we're not quite going that far today. And as a quick reminder, we have a quick tip that points out how to use your free motion machine compass if you're having problems with your skip stitches or shredded threads, broken needles, those kinds of things, we've got an awesome quick tip that'll give you a bunch of info on how to control your body mechanics a little bit better. Okay, before we get started here on the little sandwich or the little sample we're gonna practice on, we never practice on our real quilts, right? We always practice on a little sample and we always warm up before we get started. I wanna point out some of the bad before we point out some of the good. Look at this real closely here. Now, we're on the back of the project right now, so you're looking at the bobbin thread. This orange was from my needle, and I left it there on purpose because that is what happens if we begin free motion machine quilting and our presser foot is up. The presser foot controls the open and close of your tension discs, and it's really hard to tell with a hopping foot. Check this out on the machine. This is the spring-loaded hopping foot, right? So when it's up, versus down, it's very hard to see when the quilt's on. So if you get a bunch of crazy noise, like loose marbles in your machine, um, you might have to cut this out. You wouldn't normally want to leave that, but I just wanted to leave that to point out the difference between poor tension and no tension. So that's no tension. Now, what we're gonna do, again, we're gonna start on this basic puzzle piece shape, practicing kind of our moving from side to side, kind of our fluid water style motion, right? And then we're gonna go into some swirls, and then we're gonna start putting some sharp points on those swirls. Those are the three skills we wanna work on today. Now, I have my feed dogs down because I'm in free motion mode. I have my spring motion foot on. I'm gonna sit down so I'm a little bit more comfortable here. And we're gonna get ourselves started. Normally you'd be starting in the middle of your project as I am here today. I've got my presser foot down and I wanna bring the bobbin thread up. So I'm gonna take a single stroke by hand or if you have like a push button, you can do that with. And then what I do is I lift my presser foot back up and I take my thread and I literally floss it under the foot like that. And that brings up both thread tails. If I had been using a thread cutter, I would have such a small tail, I wouldn't be able to bring that up. Um, so I just take a few stitches in place, but we're just gonna lock this in real quick. And then I'm just gonna begin curving out of here. And I wanna cut this thread because it drives me crazy visually. And the other thing I want to point out is when we're doing our swirls, or if we have a very large project, we want to kind of think about our start and stop points. It's very difficult to start and stop in the middle of an arc and have it look good. And the bigger the quilt, when we restart, the more the quilt wants to shift and the stitches can get out of sync. So I'm kind of up in this arc, and now as I start, I actually might take a few small stitches to make sure I'm on target. And you'll even still be able to see that hopefully in the camera. So now, with our swirls or our puzzle pieces, we're just working on not actually staying in a straight line, so almost more of a circular line, and I'm just going left to right, and I'm coming around. Now, some of the questions we get is, what about stitch length? Well, when you're in free motion, your stitch length is controlled by the movement of your hands. So if I'm getting really tiny little stitches like I'm doing right now, my machine is moving way too fast and my hands are moving way too slow. And if I get, whoop, 
I'm gonna go slow with the machine and move my hands really fast and I'm gonna get these giant stitches that won't even lock in. See those big giant stitches? So that means that my hands are moving too fast. So now back to our drill, I just wanted to point that out. We're gonna take our motion and just side to side. It's, it's also stippling, right? But it's more organized than that. And the reason I want you to get organized like that, and you'll notice maybe even on my fingers, I'm doing a lot of my control with my fingertips. And I'm just looking at the equal distance between the stitching. This is a very easy one to start with. Now, what happens though, I'm gonna start working my way to the top and we're gonna go right into our swirls drills. Because every now and again, I'm gonna come around a little too far and now I'm in this spot right here. And instead of doing a sharp point out, we're going towards the sharp points in a little while, but right now I'm gonna arc around and arc back around. And then like in my straight line drills, I'm just following the line. And a lot of times then I'll wrap it around one time. So, so now look, it's like a spiral. And then I'll come back out here and I'll start to do it all over again. One of the things I've always felt was important with machine quilting is even if it's a mistake, make it look intentional so that you're making it so that it's happened over and over again. You can tell that it's very hard for me to talk and machine quilt at the same time. And it's really hard for me personally to stay within a motif. So this has been a really fun exercise Curving it around. You can make big ones and small ones. Now, from this point on, once you master that kind of comma shape or that swirl, let's work our way over to another section and we're gonna start to put in those flames, right? So as I come around, I shouldn't say flames, at least the sharp points. But as I come around this time, I'm gonna stop at the point and then I'm gonna arch it back around. So that is not a rounded tip at all, right? That comes in, comes again, stops. Now when we're doing our corners, we wanna make sure we don't spend too much time in the corner because what it'll often do is it makes a real big ball of thread on the back of the project. So you wanna be able to, with your free motion, both be able to go rounded and back around as well as to come out and do sharp points so that you can continue to build on all styles of different motifs just using the basic swoop or swirl. And then that pointed line, of course, is gonna go into flames if we want to. And we're gonna break those down for you in a little bit longer. What I really enjoy doing is actually doing combinations of both. The swirls, with the sharp points included, like this one right here. Oh, I'm having so much fun. Now, I could do this all day long on this little sample, and I really suggest you do it till you're really comfortable with it. But what I also wanna show you really quick here is one of the ways we can do this on our bigger quilts, because that was the challenge. This is where I started this whole series of tutorials, is what do you do when you've got a ginormous quilt? And like I said with Angela, she wants us to focus on just one small section at a time. And right now, because I'm over towards the smaller edge of the quilt, even though I have these cool bicycle clips, holding the meat of the quilt wrapped up out of the way. I don't need to put this underneath the quilt right now because I'm getting closer to the edge. So I'm just gonna bring my quilt around this way. This would be what we call the fluff and stuff method. So I have a little bit of this in here fluffed in location and I'm just gonna work back to where I was quilting because we wanna quilt from the middle outward that pushes all the batting and the loft back out. Okay, now I did use my thread cutter just a moment ago, so I won't have the opportunity to bring that, that stitch up. But look, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna focus in here on these, this maybe this one triangle shape, maybe I'll continue to carry it through. I'm not worried about the whole quilt right now. I'm just thinking about what I'm gonna do for this one motif. And I'm gonna start where I stopped before, take a few stitches. I wanna double check to make sure that presser foot's down because I don't want a caterpillar on the back of my project. And then I'm gonna immediately come out of here into a nice arcing swirl. I'm gonna stop at that point because then I can cut my threads. And remember I said it's hard 
to get a good start and stop point. So instead of making this round, this is gonna be one of those hooks. Coming back out, see how nice that looks? Now I can either continue to hook so that my motif remains consistent, coming down off of the bottom, up to my hook, back around, coming down to the bottom, up to my hook, back around. But I can also bring around the soft side of it this way, and maybe I can do myself one of my swirls. Follow that hook back around with another hook or two, because I want to get myself where I can do another swirl. So there's nothing wrong with mixing your motifs as you work. So you can see how easy free motion machine quilting can be even on a big project if you'll just take the time and focus on the basic elements of your design and your motif, as well as just look at one small section of your quilt at a time, not worry about the overall project. I wanna remind you to please bounce below into the description, print out these skills and drills printables. They're there for you to use. You can even take a pencil and draw across the top of the designs, right? One of the keys to that is don't lift the pencil up because that way you're practicing it just like you would be quilting it and we're getting that motor memory going. And as I said, I have all kinds of other tutorials we're building around this concept of the basics of free motion. So make sure you're following along and we'll see you next time at Man Sewing. Mm -hmm.